everyone, it's Jeff here again for Rhinoco Technology. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to quickly and easily connect an IP camera to a network video recorder wirelessly using a pair of Longevity.com 007 Wi-Fi bridges. Now, Wi-Fi or wireless bridging is nothing new. It's been around for some time, but these particular units are special as they're programmed completely via the dip switches on the base of the unit. That removes the need for programming via a PC and speeds things up, taking a lot of the nuisance out of programming these devices. Let's jump across to a PC and we'll check out some info on the product. So here it is on the Rhinoco website. So longevity Wi-Fi bridge solutions, long distance NetApps network setups simplified. So we're gonna create wireless bridges or a Wi-Fi bridge, a network bridge using these devices. And we're gonna do so simply by configuring the unit's dip switches and then mounting the product, obviously making sure that it's powered up via a 48 volt supply. So we can use them for CCTV installations, we can bridge Wi-Fi networks using these devices, or we can extend internet connections. And if we jump across to the data sheet for this product, you can see that we actually have a maximum range of up to two kilometers and um, 100 megabit ports on the base of the unit, two 100 megabit ports, um, up to 900 megabits uh, in the air. So the Wi-Fi path is up to 900 megabit. So obviously you can see that we include um, a few other devices or a few other mounting pieces with this product here. Um, so it's designed to be mounted on a pole, quickly and easily mounted to a pole. So let's see what we're actually going to do today. So, okay, so this is the setup that we're going to be using in this video. Now this is a page that's essentially lifted from the user manual for this product. Um, I've just modified it in a couple of ways just to make it clear where we're putting our ethernet switches. So as you can see, we have a network video recorder and the LAN port of the network video recorder is going to be connected to a PoE switch using a CAT6 cable over ethernet. Now this switch is, like I said, it's a power over ethernet switch, so it requires AC power, okay? And then it's going to be connected via another CAT6 cable to the first LAN port of the first longevity comm transmitter, first longevity comm unit, which is also the transmitter in this case, or, or in other parlance, it's known as the access point. So this, is, this unit here is going to become our access point or transmitter. It is then going to be transmitting to our receiver or our station here, okay? So this is our second longevity comm device, which is gonna be set up in receiver or station mode. It is then going to be connected via another CAT6 cable down into our power over ethernet switch here, which again is powered via mains power. Um, and then that's gonna be connected with another CAT6 cable to our camera. So just to go over that path again, so the camera is connected to the switch here. That switch is also connected to our first longevity comm unit, the receiver in this situation or the station. That's going to be connected to our transmitter or our access point over on this side. It's connected to a power over ethernet switch, which is then connected to our network video recorders LAN port. Okay, so let's get into it now. So as I mentioned here, if we, if we wanna cross-reference the diagram, so this particular switch here, this is the one that's running off to our network video recorder. So this goes to our network video recorders LAN port. Um, again, it's connected to mains here. This is actually 48 volts coming in from our power supply, which is connected to mains power. So that is going to connect to our first access point, okay, or our access point device, which is our first longevity comm unit. That's going to wirelessly transmit to our receiving longevity comm unit or our station. That is then going to be connected using another cable to a, our second switch. This is the camera side switch. And this switch is connected to our new uninitialized IP camera. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is actually program these devices. And when I say program, obviously I mean in the dip switch sense of the word, rather than having to program them using a web interface. So I'll just jump across to another camera here. Okay, so let's take a look at the base and the dip switches, the programming dip switches in question. So you can see them here. So now we have 10 dip switches one through 10, and these perform three different functions or control three different functions. The first of which is determining whether or not this device is, is a transmitter. Okay, so the transmitter, i.e. access point, um, that's dip switch one. So if dip switch one is up, then it says that this is a transmitter or an access point. If it's down, then it says it's a receiver or a station. The next set of dip switches, the next seven dip switches, control two things. They control the IP address range of our set of devices, our transmitters and receivers, in addition to also controlling the encryption um, 
password used, okay? So these zip switches here essentially set our password for these devices. The next two zip switches, nine and 10, actually control the IP addresses of our receivers or stations. Now you can have up to four receivers or stations. So as you can see, we've got two dip switches. So um, for the first address is both of them down. The second address is one up, one down. The next address is the, the second one up, the first one down. And then the fourth address is both of them up. Okay, so as you can see again, also we've got our ethernet ports on the side here. So they, these are what are gonna be connected to our power over ethernet switches. You can use port one or port two for power over ethernet. Either way uh, will work just fine, but in this video, we're gonna be using port one. Okay, so let's jump across to the manual so that we can see um, how we're going to set these dip switches. Okay, so now we're looking at the user manual for this device. And as you can see, um, we have our dip switch settings here. Now, as I mentioned before, we have uh, a block of one, a block of seven, and a block of two dip switches. The first one is our mode switch. So when it's on, it's a transmitter or an access point. The device is a transmitter or an access point. When it's off, it's a receiver or a station. The next set is our IP segment. It's described as here, but essentially this sets the address for the device in addition to also setting the encryption key and the frequency that the devices are going to use. This must match across all of your, your transmitters and receivers or across all of your access points and stations. The final two dip switches here, as mentioned before, these set the IP addresses of the receivers or stations. In this video, we don't care so much about these since we're only using one receiver, but if you had multiple receivers, these would have to be set differently on each device. So the things that we need to worry about in this video is we must set, or in this, this configuration that we're doing in this video, we must set our mode switch on one of our devices to become a transmitter and the other one to be a receiver. And we must set our IP segment, or these, these switches in the middle here, must match across our devices. Now, what settings should we put in here? Well, this, as I mentioned, controls not only our, our encryption key, but also our uh, transmission frequency and our IP range. So we need to choose a dip switch selection which matches the desired frequency. Now, in Australia, we have a few different frequencies that we can use, a few different channels that we can use, and some of them are marked as indoor only channels and other ones can be used indoors and outdoors. In this situation, I'm gonna be showing you which, well, I'm gonna be setting up in this, this particular situation, one that's here for outdoor use. So I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, here we go. So indoors and outdoors. So I'm going to choose um, something a little less complicated for this video. So this one down here, so this is gonna give us the 192, 19, 120 range in the 5,745 megahertz frequency. And to do that, we're gonna to have to set dip switch two, three, four, and five up, and then dip switch six, seven, and eight down on both of our devices. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so all of that may have made this sound more complicated than it actually is, but let me show you just how simple this is in reality. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to designate one transmitter. So in this case, I'm gonna call this particular unit here our transmitter or access point, which makes obviously this one here our receiver or station. So in reality, like I said, you could have multiples of these up to four, but in this situation, we're only use, gonna use one because we're gonna have a single wireless bridge. So. What do we need to set? Well, as I mentioned before, we need to set our first dip switch to up to make this a transmitter. So I'm gonna set that up. So now this is a transmitter in our network. And the next thing I need to do is program our IP address range and uh, password and frequency. So to do that, I need to set up dip switches two, three, four, and five for my particular, um, my particular chosen frequency, as you can see there and six, seven, and eight are still down. So that's programmed our transmission frequency and our IP range. The only other thing there, we've got dip switches nine and 10 on the back. Uh, we can leave those alone, A, because this is a transmitter, and B, because we're only gonna use a pair, okay? So that's done. That's our transmitter programmed. So the next thing that we need to do is program our receiver. Now, as this is a receiver, we do not set dip switch one up. We leave dip switch one off, so that's gonna stay down. However, we do still need to match the uh, dip switch settings on here for dip switches two through eight. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to flip up dip switch two, three, four, and five, since that's what I've got set on the other unit, and six, seven, and eight are going to stay down, like so. 
Now that's, that's programmed at this point. If you have multiple receivers, we might need to program the next two just to set the, uh, the IP address for individual devices. Um, but in this situation, we're only using a pair, so we don't need to. So just to show you the base of these two, unit he two units here, so you can see our dip switch configurations on each. And that's done. That's all the programming that we need to do. So now we're up to our installation phase. Okay. So first thing we need to do is connect an ethernet cable to each device. So that's what I'm going to do here now. So I'm going to connect it to port one on each side. So this is our transmitter side with dip switch one up. So that's going to be at my recorder. And this is our receiver side. There we go, so now we have our receiver side. So, receiver and transmitter. The only thing that's left to do is to plug them in. So, I'm gonna plug that into a power over ethernet port on the switch that's connected to my recorder. And I'm gonna plug this one into the power over ethernet port on a switch that's connected to my camera. And we're gonna wait for the devices to power up. As they power up, I'm gonna actually show you some of the lights that are on the back of the unit here, the indication lights, just to tell you about signal strength and a couple of other things. So let's jump over now back to our other camera. So we've plugged both of these devices in and they are at present booting. And you can see on the back here, we have these lights. So the first one is our power light, just to let you know that it's receiving power over ethernet. A second light is WLAN. That essentially just it doesn't let us know whether anything's linked. It just lets you know that the wireless LAN is turned on. Then you have LAN and LAN 2. These are the two physical ports at the bottom of the unit that will tell you um, whether you've got network connectivity. And then we have our signal strength down here. And this will light up according to the received signal strength for the link. Okay, so you can see that we've actually already linked up. So you can, we've got a, a light on our unit up here indicating that the link is up and our signal strength is excellent. Okay, so that's done. That's our wireless side of things done completely. So the next thing to do is now just the configuration of this camera here with our recorder. So as I mentioned before, we have our pathway it goes from our camera to our switch across our first wireless bridge, our, our receiver into our transmitter um, and then that comes down to our network switch, which is then connected to our recorder. So let me jump across to our recorder. This is it here. Now I'm gonna add a camera to channel one. So to do that, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select main menu. I'm going to log in and then I'm going to select camera. So you can see our camera has already shown up in this list, but if, it, if yours doesn't show up immediately, you can actually click device search and Hopefully, as long as everything's plugged in correctly and you have your um, dip switches set correctly, this will show up here. So you can see our camera, our brand new IP camera. Now, I need to add this device to the recorder. To do that though, I need to change the IP address of, of the unit and I need to make sure that that is gonna match the IP address or the static IP address that I have set on the recorder. So I'm gonna right click once to get out of there. I'm gonna go into network and then I'm gonna select TCP IP here. So you can see that at the moment I already have a static IP address set. If you do not have an IP address set, set statically, maybe you've got DHCP turned on, you wanna turn DHCP off and then you wanna set a static IP address in the same networking range as the router. By default, if you've already got an address assigned via DHCP, if you just turn DHCP off, this address here will be fine. So we can leave this alone. So 10.100.100.167, uh, 255, is our subnet mask. We need to set an IP in this range. Yours might instead read 192.168.1. say 25 or something like that uh, with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Essentially, we just need to make sure that the last set of digits here on our IP camera is different and everything else is the same. Okay, so 10.100.100.167 or if you've got 192.168.1 um, or 10.0.0.1 or something like that, we just need to make sure that the last octet here is different, um, but everything else is the same. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna uh, click okay, and then I'm going to click apply, and then I'm going to right click and then select camera. 
And then our camera is still showing up back here, but I actually need to change the IP address of this one before we do it. Now it's going to make me initialize the device search first because we haven't actually, this is a brand new IP camera, okay? So that means we're essentially gonna copy a password to this device. So I'm gonna click the checkbox and select initialize. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna use the current device passwords and email info, I'm gonna select next. Now I'm gonna change the IP address here to be within the range that we're after. So 10.100.100. And I'm gonna leave this set to 108 because I know that device is free, but if, if uh, that wasn't free, you could change it to obviously anything in that current networking range. I'm just gonna match my subnet mask as well. And I'm gonna match the gateway address as well. So 10.100. Ooh, 100.30.1 .1 was my gateway. Now you can get this information back from that previous networking section that we were at before. So I'm gonna select next and we're going to initialize and we're gonna set the IP. So initialize success and modify IP success. Great. So if I go okay and select device search one more time, now you'll see that we have an IP address in the correct range and our status is ticked, meaning that the device is initialized. This is one further step that we need to do and that's add it to our recorder. So I'm gonna select this checkbox here and then I'm gonna select add. And hopefully, shortly, we'll see a green light when this device connects and there you go, it's connected. So just to show you what we've done, here we go, here's the camera that we just added upside down and that's it. Okay, so just to recap what we've achieved here. So we've created a wireless bridge using two Longevity Com 007 devices. We set one of them to be a transmitter and one of them to be a receiver. We did that using the dip switches on the bottom of the device. And we also set the frequency, um, password, and the IP range that these devices were gonna use on their wireless interfaces through those dip switches at the base there. What that's allowed us to do is essentially create a big long you know, wireless ethernet cable essentially. Um, and that's then allowed us to connect our IP camera via the LAN port of our network video recorder. And then we've gone through assigned an IP address to the camera and we've added that camera to our network video recorder. So hopefully that's been useful. If you've liked this video, feel free to click that like button down the bottom. If you enjoy these sorts of videos or you, you have any future videos that you'd like to see, um, please hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below. We'll make sure that we get onto them as soon as you can. Thanks for watching.